Hello and welcome to episode 52 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. In this series, I play 15 minute plus 10 second rapid games on Chess.com. And yes, I want to try and climb rating, but mainly I want to try and explain my thought process to all of you watching so that you can try and implement some of the ideas into your own games rather than just seeing me make a move and be like, why on earth did he do that? Um, I will then be using the post-game analysis to uh, utilize the computer and the you know chess engine to see where I went right, where I went wrong, and where I could have improved so we can take a bit of a deeper look into the position and probably answer questions that people had about my position or moves that I missed, etc. Because obviously I'm not, you know, infallible. Anyway, with that being said, I quickly want to draw your attention to a video that I posted yesterday. That'll be linked in a card like there. Um, I thought it was a really interesting video, so I'd encourage you to take a look at it. If it's not your cup of tea, not your cup of tea. But it's basically a review of a really interesting chess tournament from 1938. Uh, if that's, like I said, not your thing, you just want to watch this video, please watch this video but I just thought I'd draw your attention to it because I put a lot of effort into it and I thought it was pretty cool but anyway let's get into the game and let's see if we can pull out a win today all right we are against Rhett Bowl en passant who plays 1d4 I have no idea what that flag is it's Curacao I also don't know what that country is <laughs> I'm normally pretty good with flags my opponent opens with d4, we're going to go c6 and invite him to play e4 and go into a Karo Khan. There's a good chance he just plays a move like knight f3 or c4 and we enter a Slav defense. But that's the difference for me between going d5 against d4 and then proceeding with c6 and playing c6 first. Because as we see, our opponent now goes into a Karo. Had we played d5 on move 1, we would not have achieved that. Okay, so my opponent goes knight c3, uh, one of the classical responses to the Karo, and we are going to take bishop to c4. This is, mm, I think we had a similar position in a previous game where I think f3 is the idea to gambit the pawn after knight to f6. Yes, it is. Okay, this is a really interesting gambit, actually, and... Um, yeah, we have faced this in a previous episode, and I think I handled it very well. So we're going to try and employ some of the same ideas, as well as try and implement some improvements that I learned. So bishop g4 would be a bad move in this position, which you might like the look of, but bishop f7 is an issue, because after king f7, knight e5, the king is under attack, and the bishop is under attack twice with one defender. White wins the bishop back he also takes the f7 pawn so he restores material equality and my king is going to be stranded and unable to castle so we're not going to do that um i'm trying to remember what the ideas are i think e6 e6 can't hurt just blocking this diagonal i know i'm blocking in my own bishop but so be it i think b5 is a common idea to try and put the bishop back on b3 and say yeah this diagonal is bad and if the bishop goes back to d3 which puts it on this diagonal which i think is more active in these types of positions i think moves like b4 may even exist to try and kick this knight around so i'm gonna do it i'm sure this is the idea yeah, bishop d3, that's accurate from my opponent. I can always develop my bishop to b7 to get on this long diagonal. b4 we should consider, although it does weaken our structure potentially. And give the c4 square back. If b4, knight e4, I don't know if I love that. Don't know if I love that. So... Okay, knight d7 is worth considering, but I also want to push c5 potentially uh, to challenge the d-pawn. And then I might put my knight on c6 rather than d7 so that my bishop maintains defense of e6, which could be useful if the knight comes to g5 or e5 looking at f7. So I also don't want to develop this bishop yet because if I'm going to play c5, then after takes, I want the bishop to take in one move ideally. 
So a6 is the move I'm looking at. This is very similar to a lot of Karo Khan structures where this whole idea of b5 after the pawn, like with the pawn on c6 playing b5 to kick the c4 bishop away, uh, like we've done here, then supporting b5 with the a pawn and then pushing c5 because b5 is now secured. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether I should be pushing b4 or not. Honestly, I haven't looked at these positions in depth. I'm wondering if we could get into trouble on d4 with potential, like, bishop takes b5 ideas, but we could always, after a6, push, like, c5, c4, even. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We can put this bishop on b7, like I said. Um... Our king is nice and safe, I think. Sacrifice is on f7 after, like, knight e5 or knight to g5 don't seem to work. And if the knight moves, then we're going to take on d4 with check as well, because the queen has been blocked off. Knight e2 is weird, because we haven't provoked him to move. Now, if we go b4 and then knight e2, that makes a lot of sense, but... Our pawn is on b5 still, which I think benefits us. Maybe the plan is to put the knight on f4 to target e6. Or to meet c5 with c3. And then if we push c4, the bishop can drop back to a square like c2 or b1. So that, that makes a lot of sense. If c5, c3, we might just be able to play a move like knight c6. And just put pressure on d4. c5 is kind of committal. But d5 can never be played. Because we have a ton of support on the d5 square. It feels like a natural move to me. Yeah, so his idea is c6. Sorry, c3. Knight c6 looks logical. Knight d7 is also decent looking. To support c5 with the knight. And then put the bishop on b7. We could start with bishop b7. But we are taking the bishop's eyes off of e6, which could be useful defensively. If we take... Mm, I'm not a fan. You can probably just take back with this knight. I don't really want to allow that. I want him to take and then me to take back. So, okay, this is an interesting position. Very interesting. I'm kind of debating between knight to c6 and knight d7. A move that also catches my eye is rook a7, which might look a bit silly, but the rook could swing to d7 to put pressure on the d-file, and it supports f7, and we're getting off of this diagonal, which could be a problem in the future. But I think we can do that at any point. If we go there too early, the bishop might come to e3 with x-rays in the future. Knight c6, I'm a little bit worried about the weakness of this diagonal, but our knight does control e4 for now. If knight c6, bishop g5, um, trying to fight for control of the e4 square, we could play a move like bishop b7. Mm, but then if he takes us, so something like knight c6, bishop g5, bishop b7, if he takes, I don't want to take with the queen because then the knight moves with discoveries and we're going to lose this knight. So we'd have to take back with the pawn. And I don't want to do that. Maybe we can leave our king in the center on like e7. But that seems risky. So okay, if knight c6, bishop g5, probably bishop to e7. If he takes here, we can always take back with check. Knight d7 might be better, though, because we support c5 and we support the knight on f6. Then we can play bishop b7 and the bishop's open. We do lose control of e6 a bit, but the bishop's going to be moving anyway. And we still have plenty of control over d5. So this is my choice, knight b to d7. And okay, we'll see if that's the right idea or not. It's, um, queenie one. Okay. I guess trying to come out to g3. 
or maybe even F2. It's a little annoying. We could play a move like Queen C7 to try and control that square, but then Bishop to F4 comes with tempo. If Bishop D6, we control this square, and we control this square. And if he takes, we can always take back with the knight, or the bishop with check. And we could try and line the bishop up on d6, the queen on c7, the bishop on b7, and get some snipers looking at the white position. We also have good control over e5 if a knight lands there. So I'm going to do it. If bishop g5 pinning my knight, I can probably just play queen c7. c5 have, has loads of protection. If he takes the knight, we can always take back with the knight. Or maybe even the pawn... Because now the king going to e7 is a bit better, because my bishop's already out. We're not blocking the bishop in. Bishop g5. I think queen c7 makes sense. Just fighting for this diagonal, especially the e5 square. And yeah, if he takes, we might take back with the pawn. I'm really considering that seriously. And then putting the king on e7. Maybe there could be too much pressure on f6, although our knight is currently defending it quite nicely. It's probably more principled to take with the knight, but we do relinquish some control over e5 and g5. Whereas if we take with the pawn, we have good control over those squares, and as long as we can defend the pawn well, that won't be an issue. Okay, rook d1. Are these issues? I don't think so. I think we can just go bishop b7. My opponent might get spooked by us taking the knight and then taking on h2. I don't think I want to do that, but we do have that in our back pocket to win a pawn. Well, it would be a second pawn as well. Um, but I, I don't think I want to get rid of my bishop and open up the um, f file for my opponent voluntarily. I think I'd rather him have to move his knight first. But okay. Again, we always reserve the right to play c4. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. He's wait I think that's a waste of a move. And it just weakens the dark squares even further. If this knight wasn't controlling g3, I'd be happy to put this bishop there. I think that's a bit of a concession. Knight d5 exists? I don't know where the knight's going, though. Knight h5 looking at g3 is an option. Could play h6. Hmm. We could consider moves like c4 and queenside castle, but I, I would like him to take here first before I commit to that. h6 is an idea to try and force him to do that, but he can just retreat the bishop somewhere. Although maybe we can push g5, g4 and castle queenside. I know our pawns are pushed forward, but if we get c4 in, it might be okay. It's a really dynamic position, but h3 doesn't seem right. We do have the move knight e4, attacking the bishop, and supported by our bishop. And then we're looking at g3. If a move like knight e4, bishop h4, controlling g3... I don't know what our follow-up is, though. Because mm. we have no g5 move. Maybe h6 is decent. I know we're weakening some light squares. But as long as a knight can't come here, we're probably okay. So there's no sacrifices. And we have such good control over the e5 square as well. So the knight can't go to e5. Let's do it. Let's go h6. We haven't committed our king yet. We could castle kingside, we could go queenside, we could stay in the center even if we get an exchange like this. This is a really interesting position. Our opponent's playing very quickly. Um, oh, I was also supposed to check how old his account was. That's something that I said I'd start doing to make sure that I wasn't playing cheaters or being paranoid about it, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, I might actually just check it real quick.
Okay, well, that was a very interesting bio. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> that was very interesting. But no, his account's been around for over a year. So that's fine. Queen H4. Okay. The queen is almost trapped if we take here. Queen H8, King E7. But the queen can take on G7. Rook G8. Queen H6. Mm, I don't think we can trap the queen. It's an interesting line though. There, there. Whoops. There, 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 there. Is there anything else? Well, g5 is hanging, so we have to play this. Queen h6. Bishop f8. Wait. Take? He has to take the rook. King e7. Queen's under attack. The only move is to take on g7. Rook g8 defended by the knight. Our king is completely safe. Our king is absolutely safe. The knight is well defended on f6. The queen only has h6. Bishop to f8. Again, everything's still nicely defended. Where does the queen go? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Take, take. King e7. Queen can't retreat on the f on the h file. Sorry. So queen has to take g7. Rook g8. The queen has to go to h6. Bishop to f8, attacking the queen. The queen can't go to g5 because our rook controls that square. The queen can't go to h5 or h7 because of our knight. The queen can't go to h4 because of the pawn. I think that's trapping a queen. Wait, let me just check in my head. Let me just do it without talking for a second. Da, da, da. Da, da. Da, da. I think that works. I think that works. Where does the queen go? Because we're covering h4. And here. And here. And here. You can only take. This is sick. If it works. But I think it works. Rook g8. Queen has to go to h6 because she took the g7 pawn that was controlling the h6 square. Oh my god, I don't have bishop f8. The king is on e7. The king's on e7. What am I on about? The queen is safe. Oh my god. No, no, no. No, no, no. Mm, that's... Oh, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. Alright, I still have an attack, though. Mm. That's ridiculous. How have I blundered that? I don't, my, my bishop can't go there. And if I play a move like king e8 to try and make that possible, then knight g5 and the queen gets an escape square. What if I take the knight? Well, then the knight on f6 will be under too much pressure. That's so stupid. Okay, I think g4 makes the most sense. We're going to do it. Just to try and blast open the king side. Because we do have a lot of pieces pointing towards the white king. But I think he has ample defense. Knight e5... I can't take with the knight because of queen f6. Take, 
take like this. Take, queen takes. Can I take here? Because then we line up on g2. If here, knight takes knight, rook here, we have a windmill and white loses. I mean, he must be losing. Yeah, he, he has to be losing in that variation. So, if we take on h3... How does he stop the frets? How does he stop them? Goes like that. Okay, defended by the knight. Makes sense. Still though, g3 is vulnerable. Take, take, take. We're threatening to sack. Have we taken Queen F4? We might have Queen to D5. He might be able to play Queen H3 to defend G3 and get rid of this pawn. We have some compensation though. Queen h3, queen e3, king h2 only move. Uh, rook f2 just looks weird. Um, we have ideas of knight g4. This bishop's loose, the knight's loose. And he has to sack his queen in that variation. What is going on? I'm very disappointed that I just miscalculated the queen trap earlier, though, because I did not need to sack the exchange. Um, I just missed that the king was blocking the bishop's path. Ridiculous. I should not be missing that, but we still have compensation, like massive compensation. This bishop is a monster, and his kingside pawn structure is completely shattered. Like, he only has g3 defending him at this point. And rook g3 is going to be game over. Rook g3, knight g3, queen g3 is mate. And if the queen steps away from this diagonal, we have the e3 square for our queen. The knight could be coming to g4 at some point. Attacking the queen, looking at some weak squares. This is looking pretty good. And white's pieces just kind of aren't playing. Knight f4 blocking this doesn't help because e3 is now accessed by our queen because his queen is cut off and g3 is undefended if he does that. If like this, 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 we have this because the knight can't take because we have a pin and if king h3, there has to be something there. Like, there's got to be something. Yeah, queen to, uh, oh no, sorry, that's blocked off. Uh, I trust as something. Ah, queen to e3. That looks like it would be game over. So yeah, this is very tough for white. And to be fair, although we're down an exchange, we are up two pawns currently. So material balance is technically equal. And like I was saying before about our king reserving the right to castle kingside, queenside, or stay in the centre... The king stayed in the center, and he's quite safe. Because f6 has defended so well, the king is very safe. And he's just surrounded by his pieces, right? And our bishop's doing a great job helping with the attack. We do have 2 minutes and 20 seconds, though, which isn't ideal. I may quieten up a bit at some point. Queen to f4. Oh, I considered this move. I thought this was an issue for him, though. I thought this was a problem. He has no checks. There's no useful discoveries. Because bishop to e4, we just take it. Any other move, we deliver mate. How does he guard this? 
Rook f2 stopping this. We have queen to h1. f6 is well defended anyway. Queen d5, what does he do? Queen d5. Um, how does he block? He can't block on this square. He can't block on this square. The bishop has no good discoveries because the only one stopping mate is bishop to e4 and we can just take it. And then we're up way too much material. Although, queen d5, bishop to e4, take. He does have queen d6 supported by the rook. But king e8 and he runs out of checks. I think this works. I really hope it works. But yeah, the king is so weak. And we have this battery built up now. Fortunately, this bishop has no checking squares uh, against our king. I think the best idea is bishop e4, queen e4, and queen d6 check. We can't take with the knight because our queen will hang and f7 hangs. But yeah, I think we just take with the queen. And obviously, if he trades with us, then we're up, what, two minor pieces for a rook and two pawns, which is completely winning. King f2, not a move I <laughs> considered. Wow, okay. Um, we could give this check. King e1. He's defending well. We could also give this check. King e1. Mm, I don't love it. What about the move e5? It's attacking the queen. I don't know. Knight e5. We also have h2, maybe. To find some great re defensive resources, our opponent. Wow. So, yeah, how do we attack the king on e1? Knight e5 looks good looking at these squares. But then if bishop e4 take he doesn't have d6 because the path is blocked off by our knight i know f6 could be an issue but i think we have enough time i don't know what we do against here though we might have to give this check that might be good very tough though there's so many complications and we have no time to think through them the problem is if the king goes to e1 it's so hard to attack it i feel like i need this knight to get into these squares to accomplish that otherwise i don't see how my pieces attack effectively my king could become vulnerable on the f6 square um especially now but currently the king is blocking the attack if here 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 then we're gonna lose because he takes on s6 but if here i think we have knight f3 again if he sacks yeah i saw this line but i thought i had knight d7 thought i had knight d7 in this line because my queen defends my bishop Maybe I should run like this, though. Yeah, this actually looks better. Here he does have this, though. I missed that. King e8, he has no checks. Oh, I'm going to come here. I don't know if that's right. No, I need to go back. Let's go to e8. I could get a draw, but I feel like I can win this. I feel like I can win this. Especially with this pawn. If we, if we had this pawn on h2, it would be game over. It would be completely game over. Bit, the rook could come alive, which is a bit of a concern. 
But c8 is covered. The bishop is defended. If we can get knight d7 in, that might be good. To cover the d file and cover this diagonal. And attack the queen. Control z5, so this knight might even maneuver like this in some scenarios. Again, we're so low on time. So low on time. Yeah, she's looking at b8. What about this? Wait, maybe I deliver a check first. I'm going to deliver a check. Yes. Now if queen b8, king e7, and now the rook can't get active because it's blocked off. Knight's under attack, king e7. All knight here. Then the rook's vulnerable, but... Let's go king e7. Ah, oh, did I allow this? I might have allowed that. Stupid. Stupid move. And I think we're going to have to go e5 to open up this defense after queen takes here, queen here, knight to defend. And if he takes the bishop, he goes for this. Let's offer a trade. He's not going to accept the trade, I'm sure, but now I think our problems are kind of getting resolved. I think Rook F1 was the critical move. This is a crazy game, wow. Absolutely crazy. If we can get some kind of configuration like this, we should be good. But I don't have time to do that. Oh, he's threatening this. Um, oh god, what? I need to defend that square. Well, I can't actually take, but it's not going to attack my queen anymore. Here, here. That's dangerous looking. Maybe it's better to go to e8. Let's push. Let's push. Oh, I'm getting discovered checks, but if I can promote with check, then we could be okay. Oh my god, this game is in insane. What is going on? Knight f5, king e8, bishop b5, pawn e5, rook d5, queen, rook back to d1. Can't go here because of this? Go back to no. Let's, let's, let's do it like this. I didn't want to go back to f8 because of queen h6. I don't know if that was a good line and just go back to e8 after the queen goes to h6, but then our knight will hang. I didn't want that. Yeah, I played h2 just because I wanted the pawn to promote. Also, if I went to f8, then queen h6 would fork the queen and the pawn. What? Can I not promote? I really hope I'm not blundering something. Check. King d7? Wait, I think this is okay. If here, here. Oh my god, there's two queens on the board. I think we're winning. We must be winning. The attack stopped. We're up a queen. What on earth is going on? No, that doesn't work. Everything's defended. Everything is defended. Yeah, then we take that and it's game over. Let's go! Oh my god! <laughs> what?
What was that? That game. We were one one hundred percent losing at some point. I'm no doubt in my mind. I feel like my opponent could have fought a bit more. I definitely could have managed my time a bit better because I got into some tricky situations due to a lack of time. Also, just miscalculation on my part. Like, the king blocking the bishop to f8 was really stupid of me. If the bishop could jump over pieces, then it would have been great, but it, it can't, so, you know. Or if I had an extra move somehow, but wow. What a game. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you made it to the end of the game, make sure you stick around for the analysis because I'm sure there's going to be some crazy computer lines with the way that the pieces were. I'm sure I probably missed some wins as well. Um, but wow. Yeah, if you've enjoyed that game, um, please drop a like if you, know, you had a good time, you learned something, you enjoyed the drama of it. And if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? You're 36 minutes into the video. Drop a little subscribe. And then, you know, you can see my videos when they come out and enjoy them every single day because I upload every single day. Anyway, plugs aside, let's get into the analysis. Oh my God, I'm so happy about that. Wow. All right, so that was mental. We have the game review um, percentages or accuracies. 72.1% for my opponent, 83.0% for myself. And I was correct. The, so Black was winning for basically the entire time, except for one move. One move White was winning, and he blundered it. Um, and we'll get to that later on in the analysis. But yeah, I was sure I did something wrong at some point. But it, apart from that one move, it seems for the most part I was actually winning. And... I wonder whether that um, whole sacking the exchange idea was actually viable. Like, maybe it was actually good. Like, accidentally. Anyway, let's hop into the game. We have d4, c6. Like I said, against c4 or something like knight f3, f3 I was going to play the Slav defense. And, you know, you can do that with d5 first, c4, c6. But I like to play c6 first, as I've explained in many videos, because I'm like, yo, if you want to enter Akaro Khan, I'm up for it. And that's exactly what he does. Because if you go d5, that can't happen, because after e4, black can obviously take, and white is significantly worse. Although that's kind of the sort of thing we get in the game, um, although I commit to c6 already, so, you know, probably not as good. In the case of the gambit anyway. But d5. Knight c3. D takes e4. And obviously the move here is knight takes e4. There's a few lines you can play against this. Knight f6 is what I used to play. Bishop f5 uh, is probably the main line. Knight d7 is the Karpov variation. Which is what I currently play. And there's a bunch of videos that I've played in the Karo Khan. That is linked in the playlist below. As well as the Rapid Rate and Climb playlist. Um, so, you know, you can check out some of my other Kara games if you want. And I have faced the Gambit that my opponent played before. And I think you can do it with f3 first as well. You can do it in either order. He chooses bishop c4. We go knight f6, just defending the pawn. Because it's very difficult for white to win this back without gambiting. Something like knight g to e2 to g3 is an idea. But we do have moves like bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, or maybe e6 is better? Yeah, so this is kind of reminiscent of a gambit that I play with the white pieces quite often, where I sacrifice the e4 pawn, I develop my bishop to b2 while my opponent is taking, and then I bring my knight from e2 to g3 to go after the pawn. So the reason I thought of e6 in this position rather than bishop g6 is because in that uh, line, in that gambit line that I sometimes play, the move is e6 after bishop f5, knight g3, rather than retreating the bishop. Because the idea is if you take, then you take with the pawn, and it becomes very, very difficult to win this pawn back. And black can build up some kind of formation with g6, bishop g7. If f3 is played, you can take and you have a very strong f5 pawn and grip over the light squares. That's not what my opponent did. He goes f3, we take, knight takes. Apparently bishop f5 is good. I wonder if this is better. Because if you trade like this, no, sorry, 
like this. This is probably beneficial to the black pieces because you can probably play a move like bishop to d5. Although e6 is... Oh, yeah, sorry. e6 to stop ideas of like bishop f7, knight g5 shenanigans. Similar to like if the bishop came to g4 like I explained. But I take, knight takes. But it is good to know. I think bishop f5 is the move here. Or it's a mistake. B5 is better? You can't take because you lose the bishop, right? And the bishop... Ah, the bishop can't go back to D3. Like it did in the game. This is interesting. If the bishop goes back to B3... Then... You can take on F3 and after knight takes you go E6 and the bishop's just locked out. Right, this is what I was explaining during the game when I played b5, but it's better earlier. That's interesting, because d3 isn't available. You can also start with a5 to threaten to trap the bishop, but e... Well, I assume take, take, and e6 is just as good. Okay, maybe not quite just as good, but then you have um, a very nice pawn structure, like dominating the... The light squares. Yeah, your bishop shot out, but so is his, because his bishop should be here. And if he's going to play moves like knight e2, c3, bishop c2 to get the bishop back on this diagonal, that's a lot of time. And I feel like when my opponent did that, he was wasting time in the game. And of course, the bishop doesn't go have to go back to b3, though. The bishop could go to e2. But then he's wasting a tempo again. Because if take knight takes then i can develop this bishop and go e6 and if he's going to bring his bishop back to uh d3 then i'm just going to trade with him the computer's having a bit of a hard time evaluating this position on a low depth but it's good to know b5 earlier on is better to avoid bishop d3 i wasn't aware i take knight takes e6 Bishop to f5, ah, then with the idea of b5, might have been better. But okay, e6, castle, we go b5, which is a good move. And like I said, bishop b3 is not good, because your bishop gets completely locked out of the game. Knight bd7 is apparently a little bit better, but I don't think the move order matters all that much. a6 is an inaccuracy, because of knight e4? I don't really want to take it, so I'd probably go knight bd7 to support the knight. If I move like bishop to g5, bishop e7, this looks fine. And why is just kind of facilitating peace trades? Even if this is the best line, it's kind of counterintuitive for white, because he's moving pieces that he's already developed again. I guess he's getting the knight out of the way so that he can go c3, and he's making it so that I can't control the e4 square? But I wasn't really threatening to do that anyway. Although I guess I did achieve that in the game with moves like bishop b7 and c5. Interesting though. a6. And my idea is clear. If my opponent, let's just say he plays a move like a3. I know it's not a good move. I can play moves like bishop b7. I can play moves like knight bd7. But I can also just go c5. And I have massive control over d5. So you're not advancing. If you take me, that's bad definitely bad because bishop c5 you don't have the ability to block king h1 bishop b7 looks good knight bd7 looks good queen c7 looks good i'm up a clear pawn like a clear clear pawn so yeah a6 knight e2 was a mistake and i felt like this was a mistake it just didn't seem right like that's not the way to continue your attack Knight e4 is apparently better. a4 is also good. a4 is a move that I considered he might play. And I was just going to ignore him. If he takes, then I can take back with the c-pawn. The rook's defended, so there's no sacrifices. The d-pawn is isolated. I feel like I have good play in this position. So realistically, he's not going to take. Obviously, if I take, my pawn structure gets ruined. But I'm also not going to do that. It makes c5 potentially harder because there's too much pressure on the b5 pawn. But development's easy. And, you know, being up a pawn, and my opponent has tons of activity, I just want to develop, get my pieces out, and defend my king. Which is kind of not what we did in the game, because I miscalculated this queen trap. But, 
Yeah, knight e2 is not the best way, and c5 is the best move, immediately striking in the centre. If you take then bishop c5, and we have similar to the last position, I just get too much activity. Bishop g5 is the best move. I think I, I'm sure I looked at this move at some point, but I just fought bishop e7 and I was good. Yeah, yeah, because if he takes, then I can take with check first, and after king h1, I can maybe even just go knight bd7 and not even retreat. No, not bishop. Like knight bd7, bishop b7, the knight's well defended. If you take, I want to see if taking with the g-pawn is good. It is good, but knight takes is better in this position anyway. So, yeah, I wasn't really concerned, but my opponent didn't go bishop g5. He goes c3. And c3 is kind of unnecessary because I'm not going to take him because I don't want to activate his knights voluntarily. Knight bd7 is played, best move. Queen e1. Queen e1 is kind of scary looking because of uh, queen 2 g3. I go bishop d6, which is apparently an inaccuracy. Bishop b7 is better. But I was a bit concerned about this with pressure on g7. Apparently I can go cd4, let's say knight d4. Knight c5, bishop c2. Bishop e4. Ah, the computer wants to just trade the bishops off. And once the bishops come off the board, white loses a lot of his attacking prowess. Still looks kind of scary, potentially, especially with the open f file, but the computer thinks I'm good, uh, which is interesting. But Okay, I go for bishop d6 because I just want to stop queen g3. Knight g3 is the best move in this position. Ah, because you have f5 because the pawn is pinned. So I have to castle so that this isn't a move. Or not. Knight e4. Bishop e7. I still take this position with black, to be honest. I feel like I've neutralized most threats. If I get h6 in, I'm probably good. Bishop b7's coming, I might take. But I also want him to take me. Because if he takes me, then I assume knight takes... And I'm just facilitating lots of trades in the position, which I'm happy about. So, okay. Bishop d6. Bishop g5 is a mistake. And I go queen c7. Bishop b7 was good. h6 was good. I wouldn't call queen c7 an inaccuracy. I think it's a good move. My opponent goes rook d1, which is kind of not the best idea. Knight g3 is better. Again, looking for this move h6, bishop f6, knight f6. Can he not go here? So I either take on d4, which looks kind of counterintuitive, or I go bishop f8, which looks a bit, you know, like my pieces are just retreating. Realistically, this would have been a better try from white, I think. Rook d1 does line the rook up, and it did cause me problems later in the game. But there's a lot of pieces in the way. We go bishop b7, which is it's the best move, but it's also the most natural move. h3, again, I didn't think that was good. I didn't see the need for white to be wasting time like that. But then you also have to ask the question, how does white actually continue the attack? Because if he goes knight g3, I could always take it. I'm probably not going to, though h6, bishop f6. I could go gf6 in this position. But I could also take here first. And the queen's under attack, so you have to respond. You're not going to take with the queen and allow a queen trade. Then gf6. And because I trade two sets of minor pieces off, cripple white's pawn structure, this position becomes easier to play. And the best move here, by a fair margin, is bishop to e4. Again, facilitating more trades which is not very natural whatsoever. And I can queenside castle, or I can take. But okay, rook d1, we go bishop b7, h3, h6 is the best move. Because, like I said from the white side, it's difficult for white to attack. It's also difficult for me to improve my position, because white has a lot of pressure. c4 is a move, but I felt no need to get rid of the tension yet. I guess the point is this rook never opens up because I have such good control of d5. So I am able to keep the d-file closed with a tempo. And then I can just play moves like knight d5. 
ah, that's interesting. And I just dominate. Like, I have such good control over this position. And, I don't know. Let's just say white plays a lazy move like a3. h6, where's his bishop going? Let's say bishop d2. By the way, the computer likes the idea of queen h4, which is what my opponent did in the game. And I can just throw pawns at him, probably castle queenside. But I can do that whenever I want. And... Yeah, this is dangerous looking. I could maybe put a knight on f4 at some point as well. So, yeah, the computer agrees. I am I handle this position very well. Uh, queen h4, though. And, wait, I'm just going to let the computer think a second, because it's trying to calculate everything currently, because it's very complicated. It likes c4. It likes bishop d5, which... Maybe that just blocks the rook off. I don't know. Also likes rook g8. Just resuming this threat. And then if you take on f6. Knight f6. Or gf6. And it just thinks black is better. I'm probably going to queenside castle. Maybe get c4 in to lock it down first. hg5. I am still winning. Queen h8, king e7, queen g7, rook g8, queen h6. And I find the critical idea with g4. If not for g4, this position becomes very difficult to play. And something like c4 apparently just equalizes after bishop h7. Here, here. And then bringing this knight to f3, queen h6, rook g6, queen h8. And apparently all I have is a draw. But... Yeah, I find g4. White should take. And I thought that he would take. And after a move like knight g4, I could take with the rook. But because this knight's in the way, I'm not going to be linking up on g2 that easily. I attack the queen. Queen h4, king e8. And I'm a lot better. It is tough to play this position with white. But I also don't have immediate threats. Let's just say white plays a lazy move. What's the idea? Okay, knight e3. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's tough to defend this, though. It really is. So, my opponent chose knight e5 instead. And you can't take with the knight because of queen f6. I did consider bishop e5. And after d to e5, queen e5. But I don't know. Moves like h4 kind of shut down my attack a bit. And it makes my life a bit more difficult. c4, bishop h7. This is the top line. Oh, the knight is going to hang. Rook h8. Queen g5. Queen e2. Can... Yeah, this is very difficult, actually, for white. But I chose to take on h3, which is by far the best move. And there's a big problem, because if white takes on d7, you're getting mated. I wasn't sure how the mate actually comes about in this position. But I was like, there's definitely a mate. Rook, oh, rook anywhere on the g-file. And, yeah, it's completely over. White can just sack a bunch of pieces in the way of the bishop's scope, but it's just checkmate. So I kind of just saw the windmill idea and went, yeah, this is winning after something like this. I was like, yeah, this is game over. And it is. It is 100% game over. I also have a rook g6 if I just want to win the queen as well. So I didn't see the mate. It's kind of an obvious mate, to be fair, but I didn't see it. It didn't matter, though, because I knew it was game over regardless. So, what should White have done? Knight f4, the computer likes. I feel like I checked this move, though. And I had knight e5, because the rook no longer attacks here. The knight can't move because of this again. And it's best to sack your queen... But you're still losing, right? Knight c7. Let's just say I take this. D e5. King f8. Ah, this isn't so simple. So this isn't the best line. King h8, resuming this threat. And if you take, you'll probably get him mated. Yeah. Is this tricky, though? d5 blocking the bishop. I can still take on g2. King h1. Then I can win the knight. 
and what's the material count? I'm up two pieces for a rook, and they have an absolutely crushing attack. So it's really impossible for white to defend this position. He goes g3, though, and the computer calls this an inaccuracy, but I think it's a really practical idea, because I'm low on time, and it's difficult for me to find the best moves. I play bishop e5, which is the best, d e5, queen e5. This is all quite obvious, though. Uh, queen f4 and queen d5. So it was better to go queen h5. But queen d5 is basically the same evaluation. Something like this. He found this idea of running the king, which was great. And the computer just wants me to push the pawn and be like, don't be scared. You have loads of support for this. You're going to be crashing through. Queen h4 is white's best move. I can do this. <laughs> the computer's trying to decide between promoting to a queen and a rook. <laughs> like, it thought they were different at first, and then it realized they were just the same evaluation. And in this position, I come out up a piece, but that's a lot of calculation. I chose queen d5 because I thought, wait, how do you stop anything? And yeah, I did check this line, bishop e4, queen e4, queen d6, king e8, but there's no, there's no checks. And the king has to run to f2 and hide on e1. So well done to my opponent for finding that move. I go knight e5, which is an inaccuracy. So queen g2 is better, but why? I just push h2. Okay, then what? e5. These are some tough moves. Let's just say queen f5. Rook g3. This is tough to play, though. There's a lot going on in this position. And I have no time to calculate it. I choose knight e5. Because my thought process is, look, okay. If the king goes to e1, I don't know how I'm going to attack it. The computer says, look, just keep the knight on d7. Have this kind of bind between your knights that are controlling key squares and protecting your king. And use your queen bishop, rook, and h-pawn to form the attack. I, My thought process is, okay, the king's running to e1. I need a way to attack it. The only way I can attack it is with knight d3 or knight f3. My opponent goes king e1, best move. I can't take here, because then rook d3. And if I take on d3, not that. Then queen f6, and it's... I'm losing unless I find, like only moves like king d6 queen f7 this is drawn apparently but yeah this is so ridiculous to play i need to play h2 or bishop g2 or it's basically game over i have to just give this rook up so yeah i saw that idea and i was like okay i can't take on d3 so knight f3 makes the most sense and it does because if the king goes to f2 then i have knight g4 and you've got to give up your queen or it's just checkmate which it would, would have been very pretty. My opponent sees this, though, and he plays rook f3, queen f3, queen c7, and king f8. King f8 is the best move, so that's really cool. Knight d7 is playable. Why didn't I go for this? I think I was worried about moves like bishop to e4, opening this attack up. The computer just says not to worry, and just go king f8. Queen c5, king g7, queen g5. Ah, I have bishop g6 covering myself. I have to find a series of only moves in that variation. And with no time, like under a minute, that's not going to happen. So I decided instead I was going to go king f8. And that is the best idea. Queen c5. I knew, queen, I knew king e8 was the best move, but I decided to go to g7. Just to kind of give myself a little bit more time. Because remember, I'm getting bonus time every move. Queen goes back to c5. This is apparently better. King e8. Queen takes h3. Knight g4. This is a really tough position. This is a nice move though. Queen h4 trying to set up rook to d8 ideas. Which is like a Morphe opera house kind of mate but let's just say white does nothing 
Ah, then we bring the other knight to e5 to try and access these light squares. Cool. He takes on c5, though, and then... Sorry, goes back to c5, because he wants a repetition, right? Because he knows I'm winning. I just go back to e8 now. And white can't check me. There's no checks. Queen d6, best move. Fair play to my opponent for finding it. I could have played bishop to d5, which apparently is good, but I was worried about my back rank. I was worried about moves like queen b8 and some perpetuals, but I suppose I always have knight d7. And the d file's blocked off, so I'm good. And then the h-pawn is running, but again, I'm in low time. I choose queen h1 check, because my idea is that I'm blocking the rook from the d file. Then I come back to c6. Queen f4. And then king e7, yeah. That was the move. And after I played it, I was like, why did I do that? Queen f3 is better. Or knight g4, or knight d7. Knight d7 is probably the most realistic move that I'd play. And then invest in the h-pawn from here, because it's tough for white to attack. Something like rook f1, rook f8. I can kind of curl up around my king, and then I can invest in the pawn. But yeah, king e7 is a blunder because of rook f1. And my only idea in this position was e5, trying to do this. And after queen e5, queen e6, queen c7, I was going to go knight d7. And my idea was that if he takes, I don't know, maybe I can push, but this is losing. It's just losing. And I knew it after I played it, but I had so little time. But my opponent doesn't find it. He goes knight d4, and this... Okay, this wasn't the most accurate. This is more accurate, I guess, trying to take on g3 and offer a queen trade. But again, I'm trying to play quickly. Queen d6, force the queen back. This move existed, but then knight f5. My opponent, again, makes it tricky for me. Queen d5 is good. It's actually, the, I think, the best move. Because uh, if my opponent goes knight to f5, I can't take it, obviously. But I can just come back to e8. The knight is survives. I didn't want to go king d7 because I'd be lining stuff up here. Uh, but my opponent goes king c1 instead. And I go h2. And I was very happy with this move because I finally have a second. Although, I do have queen g5. Had I seen this move, I would have played it. Because it forces a queen trade. And then all my, all, all my problems are solved. Like, I'm up a pawn or two. But this h-pawn is the problem. The g-pawn is going to fall. And then I'm going to be up two pawns. And the h-pawn is going to force some kind of sacrifice from white to stop it. So, yeah. h2 is still good, though. But it allows white to continue attacking. Knight f5, king e8, queen b6. And I could take the knight. But queening is just as good. I didn't want to take the knight here because I was a little bit concerned about rook e1. Computer says to shut up and go queen e sorry, knight e4, and I'm good. But I thought queening was better because the way that these pieces protect each other makes this so easy to win, in my mind. Knight d6, king e7, queen c7, knight d7. I just curl up in a ball and there's nothing that white can do. Knight goes back to f5. By the way, if you try to take this bishop, I can just take, because I have two queens. I'm good. You have no checks, and I'm going to sack my queen for the rook to make things nice and easy, and I'm going to be up a full rook. And my king is finally defended. But yeah, knight d7, knight f5, we take, and then rook e1, I just take it, and it's game over. There's nothing for white to do here, though. If he takes my queen, queen h1, king c2... Again, I'm just up a rook. I'm up a couple pawn. Sorry, I'm up a rook and a piece. Um, and of course, I'm just going to curl up now. Find a way to defend this. Something like queen c6. The queen retreats. I'll probably put the queen on e6. Just realistically. Okay, that does hang this pawn. But then I can get in with moves like queen to e2 maybe. Force the king out here. And yeah, I'm... I mean, it's obviously winning. I'm up a piece in a rook, and my king is defended. I can put the bishop on e6 to make things easy as well. But yeah, I did blunder the game away with king to e7 because I had no time. Crazy position. 
And yeah, that was really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that game as much as I did, at least uh, converting it. But yeah, I, I had the advantage the whole game, apart from that one move. But my opponent didn't see the correct idea. Thank God he didn't, because I only had like one line to draw that game. And I don't know if I would have found it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll let you guys go now if you've watched until the end of the video. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.